In this video, I'm going to show you how to interpret a velocity versus time graph. Now, when interpreting any type of graph, always pay extra special attention to what the x and the y axis represent on the graph, particularly when you're talking about speed and distance. So, for example, do we know if it's a distance versus time graph, a velocity versus time graph, or maybe even an acceleration versus time graph? Now, in this example here, uh, we have a bug and it's crawling along a straight wire. So, the velocity the v of t of the bug at time t from 0 to 11 is given by this graph. Now because I actually tell you that this is a velocity time graph, we know that this is v of t on the y-axis. And you can kind of see it here is a little bit fuzzy. So let's look at this graph and we're going to use it to answer some questions. So the first one here is, at what time t does the bug change direction? So the bug changes direction when the velocity changes from positive to negative or negative to positive because we know that means it was going right and then left and or left and then right. So this happens at the 8 second mark. So from 0 to 8 seconds we can see that the particle had a positive velocity and then after 8 seconds all the numbers are now negative so the velocity is now negative. Alright so t is equal to 8 seconds because v changes from positive to negative. Question B. At what time t is the speed of the bug the greatest? Now remember, speed doesn't take into account direction, so it doesn't have a positive or negative, or sorry, it doesn't have a negative um, sign. So we can see that the, on the positive side, the greatest speed is at 2 seconds, which is at 3 meters per second. However, when we take a look at the negative side, we can see the greatest velocity is negative 4 meters per second. But when we take the absolute value of that negative 4, we actually get positive 4. So at t equals 10 seconds, it has the greatest speed. So the speed, remember, is equal to the absolute value of the velocity. And in this case, that velocity was negative 4, which gives us a speed of 4 meters per second. And that is because it is the furthest from v equal to 0. Or you can think of it as from the x-axis. All right, part C. When is the bug moving right? And when is the bug moving left? Give a reason. So the bug is moving right, remember, when the velocity is positive. So this happens from 0 to 8 seconds. And that's because we have a positive velocity. And then from 8 to 11 seconds, we have a negative velocity. So the bug is actually moving left. All right, next. Uh, when is the bug's acceleration positive, negative, or zero? Now, when we're looking for acceleration on the velocity graph, we're actually looking for the slope, because remember, the acceleration is actually one derivative higher than velocity. So when we're reading the graph, um, we're looking at the slope of the different parts. So here, from zero to two, this always has a positive slope. So that's gonna, I'll mark it with a positive sign. From 2 to 3, it has a negative slope. 3 to 4, it has a slope of 0. 4 to 5 is another negative slope. But then from 5 to 6, it's a positive slope. 6 to 7, that slope is flat, horizontal, so that slope is 0. Now from 7 all the way until 10, this is all a negative slope. So this is going to be a negative. But then after the 10 second mark, from 10 to 11, the curve goes back up. So this is a positive slope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transcribe all these plus, minus, and zeros into times. So when is the bug's acceleration positive? So we can see it's from 0 to 2, 5 to 6, and then 10 to 11. So 0 to 2. 5 to 6, and then 10 to 11. And the reason I'm going to put is 
the slope is positive. When is the acceleration negative? That's where all the negative slopes occur. So from 2 to 3, 4 to 5, and then 7 to 10. So the negative slope is 2, 2 to 3, 4 to 5, and then 7 to 10. And that's because the slope is, so the slope is negative. And then finally, it is 0 from 3 to 4, and then 6 to 7. And here the slope is zero. All right, our last two things that I would like to do is to transcribe this graph into a speed graph and then also an acceleration. Now, when we're taking a look at speed, remember the speed is the absolute value of velocity. So this whole part of the graph from zero to eight seconds is already positive. So we don't have to change any part of this. However, after eight seconds, from 8 to 11, this part down here, that is negative. So when we take the absolute value or the positive side of that, that gets reflected. So we're going to have a graph that looks like this. It's going to be reflected over the x-axis. So we still keep that first part from 0 to 8, and then we reflect to 8 to 11 because that's negative. So what this would look like, something like this. So you'll notice that I am actually just redrawing the top half of the graph from 0 to 8 seconds and then after the 8 second mark we were going to reflect it. So let's label this. So this is going to be our t and then the y-axis will be speed. All right, lastly, we're going to take a look at the and graph the bug's acceleration. So we already looked at where it's positive and negative, but now we're going to go a little bit further. So what we need to do is we're going to draw some triangles to create some slopes. So here's the first slope we know, and we can see that the rise here is 3, and the run is 2, which means that the Acceleration from 0 to 2 seconds is 3 over 2, which is 1.5. So from 0 to 2, we're going to draw a straight line at the 1.5 mark. So this is going to be, let's pretend that, um, so this is our acceleration. Let's just pretend that we're using meters per second squared as our units. And this would be our time. From 2 to 3 seconds, let's draw another triangle here to forget the slope. This is a rise of 1 and then a run of 1, but it's going in the negative direction. So from 2 to 3, the acceleration is negative 1. Okay, go back to 3 over 4. We can see that slope is 0, so the acceleration is 0. So from 3 to 4, we draw an acceleration of 0. And then from 4 to 5, it's going to be negative 1 again, and so on. Now, if you want to pause the video now to try it before you continue watching, you can. So I'm going to draw the rest of it. From 5 to 6, it has it's at 1, a slope of 1. 6 to 7 is a slope of 0. From 7 to 10, this is a big one, it goes from here all the way down. So this slope, this rise, is going to be 6. And this run is 3, which gives us negative 2. 6 divided by 3 is negative 2. And then the last bit will be back to a positive 1 acceleration.